Welcome to the Quit Vaping Podcast, the podcast designed to make you a non-listener. In this show, I'm not going to scare you away from a life of vaping. What I am going to do is show you just how good your life can be without it. Thank you so much for listening and enjoy the show. Welcome back to the Quit Vaping Podcast, episode 15. My name is Andrew Cipriano, and I really do hope that this is one of the last episodes you have to listen to, and it'll be a good one. If you've listened to 15 episodes of this podcast and you're still vaping, then this episode is going to be really important for you. And remember, I'm a life coach, and what that means is I help you stop doing things you no longer want to do, and I help you start living the life that you want by teaching you about your brain. If you don't understand how your brain works, you really can't do anything deliberately in life. If you don't understand how to manage your thoughts and emotions, then you create a life you don't want. Now, many of us are running on unconscious beliefs, and that's what this whole podcast has been designed to help you uncover. If you have belief systems that vaping is serving you or that you're going to be less happy if you quit vaping, then you're always going to want vaping. That makes sense, right? When you have a desire, it's coming from belief systems. And I know this is true because I have not vaped for about a year and a half, a little bit longer than that now. And I genuinely, I promise you, there's no desire to vape. There's not like I'm using willpower when I'm around a vape. I genuinely don't want to use it because the desire for nicotine is all made up in your mind. Once you're addicted, yes, you are physically addicted to it, so you have a chemical addiction. But remember, that only lasts like two weeks. The only desire you have ever for nicotine after the chemical addiction is coming from believing that it's serving you somewhere in your life. And here's today's question. It's the million-dollar question, guys, so take it seriously. Do you actually want to quit vaping? If you've made it through 15 episodes of this podcast, then I don't think you do. And I'm going to be very straightforward with you. And I love you regardless. Remember, I don't think that vaping is inherently wrong. It's an addiction. That's the truth. But I don't think it's inherently wrong. I've been addicted to things in my life before. Obviously, nicotine is one of them. I think I drink a lot of coffee. I like sugary foods. I drink alcohol sometimes. I don't think I'm wrong for doing those things. But at least I'm honest with myself. I still drink alcohol occasionally. And the reason is because I think it serves me. (laughs) I like going out on Friday nights and just washing away my consciousness so that I don't have to think about my life sometimes. I'm not going to lie to you. I do that. As a life coach, I do that. I do it consciously, though. What I don't do as a life coach anymore, as a business owner, as an adult that respects myself, is I don't lie to myself. And I'm not saying that if you're still vaping, you're lying to yourself. But there are some people listening to this episode who actually, I don't think, want to quit. There's a part of you that kind of wants it, but there's a bigger part of you that says, hey, you're not going to be happy if you quit vaping. Or that vape for real is really good. So there's a part in our life where we start being really honest with ourselves. We stop blaming other people. We don't blame the tobacco companies. We don't blame our parents for getting us hooked on cigarettes. I've done all those things, by the way. And we start deciding what results we want to create in our life. And if you're still vaping, there's a part of you that wants to vape, and that's fine. But notice that the reason you're still vaping is because there's part of you that wants to, and you have to make the decision that you want to quit vaping if you want to quit vaping. I can teach you how to feel your emotions. That's great, and it's really important, by the way. And I can teach you how to understand that your beliefs cause your actions. But if you're not willing to actually do the work of changing your belief and being open-minded, then I can't help you. And that sucks because I love helping people. <laughs> but again, like maybe you're just not ready to quit. But my uh, the reason I'm talking to you guys about this today is because it's episode 15. And, you know, my job as a coach isn't to make you choose what the right thing to do is. I don't know what the right thing for you is. I really don't. My job as a coach is to get to the truth of your life so that you can make decisions from honesty. And if you're not happy with the truth that you find, you can change your life. But when we allow ourselves to lie to ourselves about what we actually want, what we don't want, we create lives that are very unhappy. And then often we blame other people and that never serves you because when we blame other people for our results, then what happens is we become victims because what is a victim? It's someone who disempowers himself. How are you disempowering yourself when you're blaming other people? Because you're removing your decision and your action responsibility. So anybody who removes responsibility from themselves by blaming is victimizing themselves effectively. And the reason I'm talking about this today is because yesterday I was in the hospital with my dad and he's been a smoker his, like, I don't know if I should say his whole life, but he started when he was like 22 years old, picked up his first cigarette and he is 62. So it's been 40 years. He quit smoking about a month and a half ago. Something that honestly, even as a life coach, and I like totally believe in human potential to change, I didn't think I'd ever see it. I didn't think that he was ever going to willingly change his beliefs about cigarettes and stop. 
Now, the reason I was in the hospital is because he has two 100% blocked main arteries in his legs. Listen, guys, I'm not in the medical field. <laughs> you know, I do the mental health stuff. I do the psych stuff. I don't do the physical medicine stuff. But I can't believe that he could even be walking or alive with two 100% blockages in anything. <laughs> so apparently that's a thing. And I guess one of the main reasons that um, the doctors see that, those blockages in his legs and the specific arteries they were in, is because of smoking. So, you know, he had to come to Jesus, talk with his doctor. And I had a come to Jesus talk with him. And I, you know, I did this very differently than I would have used to. I used to be upset with the way he was living his life, you know, but now that I'm a life coach, I love him unconditionally. However, he comes and I talk to him, you know, like a, like a life coach would talk to their client, right? I don't know what's best for you. This is the consequence of your decision. This is what's going to happen if you keep smoking. This is what's going to happen if you don't keep smoking. Whatever choice you make, I support because I believe that you were an adult that can make their own choices and I love you for it. And he actually put down his last cigarette a couple months ago. Well, I'm lying because I know since then he's had one or two, um, but he quit smoking. And by the way, guys, I'm a life coach. You know, I'm going to say this over and over. Like I do mindset stuff. My dad is an older Italian guy that will not do mindset stuff. My dad, like he has a son that helps people quit vaping and he is not going to use any of the information that I have to quit vaping. Like he is just not the guy for mindset work. He's a very, very hard headed Italian guy. And he just put down his cigarettes because it was either death or life. And he's choosing life for right now, at least. <laughs> so just keep in mind, like he's not doing any of the mindset tools. And again, is this mindset tools going to help you? Are the past 14 episodes going to change your life and help you have control over yourself? Yes. But I just want to show you that actually the biggest thing you can do for yourself is just deciding if you want to quit or not and being honest with yourself. And all the mindset stuff is like absolutely going to help you. I'm not talking down about life coaching. Like this has changed my life. And I believe that the reason I have no desire for vaping today is because of the mindset tools. Now I want to offer this too. This is very interesting. Remember that your thoughts, your belief systems, those create desire. My dad still has a desire for cigarettes. How do I know this? Because I know he bought a pack of cigarettes today before his surgery. Why did he do that? Because he was stressed out. He told my mom, I, just, I haven't talked to him about it, but he told my mom he was stressed out. So he bought a pack of cigarettes and it's very interesting because he still associates stress with cigarettes. For me, I don't believe that. I don't believe that actually being addicted to anything helps me with stress. I've done the thought work. He has not done the thought work and he has not done the emotional work. So he made a very hard headed decision to quit cigarettes, which worked, but now he's doing something called the willpower method. He's always going to have a desire for cigarettes because he's always going to attach him and his emotional health with cigarettes. Now, again, if you've listened to any of the episodes in this podcast, you're going to know that actually you're a much healthier person emotionally when you're not addicted to anything and that you can learn to manage your emotions without needing substances. Remember, that's called allowing emotion. I talk a lot about that in other episodes. But when you quit with a decision, it's very possible. And I actually think that's the main thing you need to do is make a decision. But if you want to quit permanently without willpower, you've got to learn how to manage your emotions and you've got to learn how to question what you believe about nicotine, cigarettes, uh, vaping, whatever source of nicotine you're getting. And you have to decide what you want to believe. And I always tell people this, whether you decide to believe that nicotine supports your life or it's not supporting the life you want, you're going to be delusional either way. And what I mean by that is you can find proof that nicotine is going to help you and you can find proof that it's not. And you can believe either one. And you're delusional either way, truly, because there's truth and there's not truth that supports both cases. So what I always tell people as a life coach, and this is my job, is to tell people to believe things that serve them. It serves me to believe that nicotine has no place in my life. It doesn't help with my emotions. It doesn't make me feel good. I don't even believe that I like it anymore. And I think that all of the, there, it's actually true, like a universal truth, that addiction doesn't help you with emotions. But the belief that I'm delusional on, that I could find proof for either way, is that I don't like it. Because I think I did like vaping. Like I liked the feeling of numbing over my consciousness. And how do I know that? Because I still drink alcohol and I think it's very much the same exact trigger. And I still support alcohol, right? I still use that. So I want to offer that you get to choose what you want to believe and you're going to be delusional either way, which means that you'll find evidence on either side that's going to support your belief. So choose beliefs that serve you. I choose to believe that I can be a life coach and go out on a Friday night and have a couple of beers and I'll be fine. And I can still be like a life coach. But you know what I also believe is that I can't actually be addicted to something and be a life coach. So like for me to be consistently hitting a vape and be disempowering myself and actually be addicted to a physical substance, I don't think that's healthy. And people could make the argument that I'm addicted to alcohol, but I don't use it like I did with nicotine. Nicotine was all or nothing for me. So I want you to just take a few minutes, like go and sit at the end of your bed or your couch or wherever you got to sit down today and ask yourself, do I actually want to quit? And if you're still vaping, then it's a no. 
I mean, that's just the truth, right? Because there's a part of you that outweighs the part of you that wants to quit if you're still vaping. If you actually want to quit, you're going to question what you believe about nicotine. You're going to choose beliefs deliberately. You're going to feel your emotions and you're going to make the decision to quit. And then you're going to honor yourself and your brain's going to want to freak out. And that's where you do the thought work. That's where you allow your emotions. Because if you resist your emotions, you end up in the willpower method and then you have to go back to a cigarette to fight the willpower and you're exhausted and it's just a whole mess. This is a quick little episode and it's one that's going to change your life. Hopefully all of them are. If you're still vaping by now, that's no problem at all. I'm not judging you. I don't know what's right for you. I vaped again. I vaped for seven years before that I smoked cigarettes. But I can tell you that today I choose to believe that as a life coach, I cannot be addicted to nicotine or else I'm going to make a really shitty life coach. And I want to be a good life coach. So I'm not addicted to nicotine anymore. And my dad no longer smokes cigarettes. So fuck, if he can do it, you can make the decision too. <laughs> I'm going to swear today because I, you guys don't know my dad, but I never thought that was going to happen. And like, again, my whole job is to believe in human potential and I never saw that coming. So he wowed me even, but keep in mind that he is using the willpower method because he hasn't done the thought and the emotional work that I'm helping you to understand how to do. So it's yours. Take it or leave it. You can quit with the willpower method. Anybody can. But if you want to actually remove the desire, which I think that's where all the value is and what I teach. So answer the question for yourself, love your decision, love your response, love your truth and do what's best for you. Have a fantastic day. I'll talk to you next week. What's up guys. I hope you're enjoying the show and that each episode is bringing you one step closer to becoming a non-listener. If you'd like to take all this information to the next level and finally quit vaping for good, you can check out the course link in my bio. Have a great day. See you next week.